Hey. So, I see that I haven't done an update in like three weeks. And I just wanted to show you that I think pretty much. <sighs> don't know why I always try to show you. But like, pretty much my eczema's gone. Like, it's a little bit dry, but it's more like a dry because it's cold out rather than it's eczema dry, if that makes any sense. And I have a fever. <laughs> um, I had a fever as of yesterday, and don't ask me why I wanted to do an update while I had a fever. I thought now would be as good of a time as any. So... I take evening primrose oil. Try to do it once with every meal, three times. Still take my fermented fish oil, about half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon twice a day. Um, still taking this probiotic for dairy. Um, has a lot of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium and my daily supplement vitamin. and I recently invested about 400 bucks in biocult now I'm not crazy I promise you um, and I recently bought this book bye Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. So she is, here's her picture. She has a son who had um, a learning disability and she wanted to cure him. She um, created this GAPS diet. Um, so it's kind of cool. See you. Autism, dyslexia, ADD, ADHD, uh, schizophrenia, and depression, like all these are related to your diet. And I haven't done like intense reading, mostly skimming or taking random notes. Um, but it's a really good book from what I've read so far. Uh, it talks a lot about your gut flora, what that has to do with um, your allergies and things like that. Um, so when there's gut dysbiosis in your um, system, obviously your gut, um, your body is deficient in a lot of nutrients. It's also what the gut bacteria does, uh, the beneficial bacteria, is they not only help your body break down certain sugars and certain foods, but they also produce nutrients, which I did not know. And it's kind of cool. Um, so when you have gut dysbiosis, yeah, you can't eat certain foods. Um, one big one is dairy. Um, because the lactose, you need a bacteria to break down lactose, and apparently a lot of people are deficient in that bacteria, so therefore we have a lot of people who can't have dairy. Um, it's not that we've lost the enzyme to break down that um, lactose, but that we're deficient in that particular probiotic. So, the reason why I invested $400 in these things is because it has 14 different strains. Um, Dr. McBride recommends it. It's 14 different strains. Um, it does have some soy and some dairy. Um, so I guess like there are potential problems with that. Um, I'm not too concerned since my skin's a lot better and it's not. I actually looked at some of my older videos today. And my skin looked pretty bad. Um, but now it's, I think my body is in a good spot where I can actually have a little bit of gluten and dairy, or a little bit of soy and dairy. And in a probiotic form, should be okay. <sighs> yeah, so. Mm. So this book talks a lot about what's going on in your body. There's all these different chapters. So, um, your immune system, just how gut dysbiosis affects you, 
and then she talks about the diet. Um, that part is what interested me because I kind of already have somewhat of an understanding of what's going on, but I wanted to have more of an idea of what to do. <clears throat> so not only are probiotics really important, but also fermented foods. And she says, um, do not start eating the fermented foods. Start with the juices, which did not occur to me. And the reason is that um, fermented vegetables are still pretty fibrous. There's a lot of fiber in them, and if you have an inflamed gut, the fiber is just going to irritate it, depending on how badly your gut is damaged. Obviously, mine's pretty damaged, so I want to start with the fluids, the juices, the... And so she recommends doing the sensitivity test before you reintroduce it. So, like, you're supposed to take a drop and then put it on your wrist right before bed, and you let it sit overnight. You let it dry on there, and then in the morning, if it's got a red spot, then you're not ready to introduce it. But if not, then you're supposed to introduce it in small increments, like a teaspoon a day, until you can build your way up to like a cup and a half or something. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. I'm really excited. Um, hopefully, I will be more diligent in giving you guys updates because. Um, doing YouTube videos keeps me accountable for like what I eat and helps me stay on track. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that I binged on bad food on my birthday. It was like April 4th. It was actually um, a three day binge the day before my birthday and the day after and the day of. Um, I really craved butter and cheese and like bread. It was amazing. Um, I did have cheesecake too and uh, Cadbury um, mini eggs. Those are amazing. Um, yeah, a lot of cheese, butter, and bread. Oh, and another thing that she talks about is she talks about constipation diarrhea um, certain dairy foods will help with constipation and certain dairy foods will help with diarrhea um, what are they? so if you're having diarrhea um, it's good to have high protein dairies so like fermented milk products like yogurt whey kefir and cheese if you're constipated, it's better to have high fat dairy. So things like um, ghee, butter, and sour cream are good. She also really recommends egg yolks if you don't have an egg allergy. A lot of people have uh, tend to have trouble digesting egg whites. So she says to do a sensitivity test with the egg yolk where you put a drop on your wrist overnight. And if you're okay with that, she recommends four to eight egg yolks a day. Sounds a bit intense, but... um. If you're on the GAPS diet, there's not a whole lot of different foods you can eat, so whatever. Mm -hmm. So She also recommends not eating before 10 a.m. because your body's in a detox mood or mode. Um, so that's all I have for now. I want to try to introduce... Um, Sakura juice into my diet, so maybe I'll do a test tonight, or I might wait till I'm better. Knowing me, I'm going to be impatient and do it tonight, so we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted.